Hey music fans, as a roadie I had this great opportunity to tour with all these bands. I wrote a book about my experiences on the road and it was the number one new release on Amazon and Bios and it's now sold millions of copies on Kindle. I'm Joel Roadie and this is my podcast, Party Like a Rockstar. This is my first episode of my buddy John Mann. John Mann has done over 2,000, well over 2,000, over 2,300 shows with Sir Elton John. He's his percussion player. He's a good pal. He's a really great human being. He actually was on the very first podcast I ever did. I interviewed him with Peter from a band called Bad Religion. I hope you guys are Bad Religion fans as well. It was a real fun interview. I urge you guys to check it out. If you want to get to know John a little bit more, he is an interesting guy. Anyway, he had never heard of Nightwish. And of course that excites me because I get to bring him in on, on it all. And uh, we'll see what he had to say about it, right? We'll jump into this. I also wanted to throw a shout out, a true thank you. Cream Magazine is back. It's back. So thank you people at Cream for sending me this issue to check out and the people at Shorefire Media for thinking of me. Let's jump in this together and let's see what we got with John Mann. Okay, how are we doing here, John? Doing great. Good, good, good. So this is my first selection for you. It's a band I don't know if you've heard of or not, but you can clue me in. Have you ever heard of a band by the name of Nightwish? I don't think so. Oh, cool. Okay, cool, cool, cool. So they have been around since the late 90s. They're from Europe. And uh, this is 10 minutes. It's a little longer. Have you ever performed at Vakken? Mm, no, that I'm looking at that name. I don't, that doesn't sound familiar to me. All right, cool. So let's I jump into it in Germany. Bakken's in Germany, yes. Yeah. Yeah, it's a festival in Germany. It's a lot of people. It's a lot of metal music and whatnot. Mm -hmm. so anyway, uh, we'll jump into this here and you could let me know cool. uh, what you think of the band Nightwish. All right, cool.
Let's stop for a sec. We got to like, it's an intermission in between the song almost. So okay. a question, first of all, you know, how are we doing so far? What do you think? But uh, are there songs that you have that you do the same where it's such a long song, you take a little break in between? Uh, no, I don't think so. Okay. I, I mean, think of you mean, I mean, the band kind of takes a break. You mean like a musical sort of break? Yeah, like a musical break. Cause like this, I, I love this part of the song and I never thought I would so much. I've, I've watched this a lot now. I think it's just an, an epic masterpiece and it gives the, the, the track a bit of a room, a bit yeah. of space. And it lets you kind of collect your thoughts about what you've been digesting. Yeah. And I love this part of the track so very much, but also as a percussionist, it would be a moment like this where you can, start to build that anticipation again so i was trying to think if there was anything you could relate to in your catalog that you had done it similarly you know i mean like we kind of i mean i don't do songs that are that long really i mean that's a, that's a this is like a bit of an epic composition you know this is like a, a whole thing here i mean we're already what three or four minutes into it right five yeah we're five minutes yeah we're five minutes into it right so I mean, you know, like with Elton, we do, you know, uh, that song Funeral for a Friend, Love Lies Bleeding, which is really kind of two different songs in a way. It's kind of the same song put together, but it's they have two complete sections. And yes, the middle section breaks down and goes into this other little uh, interlude thing. So the listeners, it kind of builds into the next section. Right. But it. Yes, it's like a chance to breathe a little bit, and it's a chance to kind of get refresh your ears a little bit. But I mean, this is this is pretty epic, really. Yeah. Okay, so we're doing good so far. So let's continue on. <laughs> All right. Cool. All right.
Wow. Stuff. Okay, I'm a fan now. So good, isn't it? You know, so, so I'm not to put you on the spot, but questions that just came to mind. I, I love this band. I love this performance. And they're they're relatively new to me, you know. So my question to you is, uh, this song, uh, what tracks in your life? So as a young dude, what track, when it came on, every time was just as exhilarating as the last time? And then I know from touring, when Scott si Weiland, uh, for example, would sing certain songs every night, I still yeah. get the other thing. So what yeah. else in song to you every single time? And I, I don't know. You've done thousands of shows now, literally. Yeah. What is yeah. the one that still gets the, the hair on the show? Uh, the, what are yeah, they? You know, because uh, he's got a lot of songs that still do that to me. I mean, like, you know, don't let the sun go down on don't let the sun gets me every time. Mainly because I see people in the front row and a lot of them are like in tears. Because that yeah. song is so heavy to a lot of them. But even some of the songs like like Leave On that I kind of grew up with. And, you know, those songs really, uh, there's there's another one that we do. Um, uh, 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 the song Gray Seal, which we don't play very often, but it's it's kind of rocking like that. And it has two different sections. It's one of those, you know, da -ka -da -ka -da. Hey, you Gray Seal, how does it feel? You know, it's like really gets you going every time. But hey, man, you know, his songs are they're emotional, even if you go back to his first song, like your song still gets me when we play it, because it's such it's like the perfect song. It's it beautiful. Great. It's perfect. The lyrics are perfect. You know, these guys, man. Wow. Uh, I can't say enough about that band. She's a great singer. You know, I love the drummer because he's not. Like a lot of these heavy metal guys now, they're just trying to play every lick they can play, you know, but he's just playing the, he's just playing the music, you know? Yeah. He's not trying to like showboat or anything like that. And, and it, and the sound is great, man. The the sound of this whole video, it's well done. The players are, I love the guy's keyboard rig with the, whatever it's those great, things are. The, the bones or tubes or whatever that is, but man. So, uh, he's the composer of the tracks and this track too. Is this band German? Uh, so they're out of Europe, yeah, but uh, Finland at the core. Okay, yeah. yeah. So. Wow, I'm I love that. I mean, that's I mean, that's not a song. That's a that's a composition. That's like a yeah. So what was the track for you as a little dude that uh, you just couldn't get enough of? For me, it was uh, John Lennon. Imagine I had uh, heard it and I, I didn't understand that maybe I could hear it again. I was so young. It was on the radio. Mm -hmm. And when I, I understood, I, I put it together that you can buy a medium to repeat listening. It was oh. very exciting. It was very exciting. But yeah. uh, what was it for you? What was the first one that I, comes to mind? You know, I luckily I grew up with like a like a, a, a pretty wide range of, of music because um, my brother was in like a soul band, like a like a horn band. So they played a lot of Chicago kind of tunes and they played a lot of like um uh, um, like even like James Brown and stuff like that, or or they would play Blood, Sweat and Tears. They would they would play like soul music, but also I had other friends that were in bands that were playing like rock and roll music. So I got turned on to Jimi Hendrix real early, and but you know some of the records I had were probably some of those first Chicago records that I would play over and over again, um, like like the very first Chicago record that had like. Well that, well, that would be the second Robert, like, like Make Me Smile. And mm -hmm. you know, even songs I hear them now, those Chicago songs, I almost can't get enough of them. But then my brother, my younger brother, he, you know, he brought home a Led Zeppelin album. So then everything changed, right? Yeah. So yeah. I couldn't get enough, of course, of Stairway to Heaven. You know, yeah. didn't matter how many times they played that. Uh, um, and I also got turned on to some of so even like country rock bands like the Allman Brothers. Um which I could listen to the Allman Brothers over and over again. All so, day long. I'm with you. I love them. Yeah. So I, I'm very lucky to have a wide, a wide, like the first, one of the first bands I got in was more of like a rock, country rock band. We played a lot of like, uh, we played a lot of Allman Brothers because there was two brothers in the band. They both played guitar, these guys. Ah, okay. And and they turned me on to like a lot of Rod Stewart and, um, um, we did songs by uh, 
uh, who's that other band? Uh, that other country rock band. Oh, slip in my mind now. Um, Skinner. Skinner. Yeah, yeah, okay. right. We do stuff like that, and uh, but then after that, I joined a band that was more of like like a funk band, a soul band with these two guys. One of them used to be in the OJ's when he was a young kid before they got famous, and and these uh, and they were both really good players, and they turned me on to a lot of stuff. So that band we were doing like average white band. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's another band that I can hear over and over again, yeah. you know, Schoolboy Crush and, uh, you know, pick up the pieces and those kind of those kind of bands, because I'm more of a I, I think I when I when I play, I like to play funk a little more than just straight up rock and roll. OK, but, yeah. Yeah. All right. So when I come over for dinner tonight, we're going to listen to some Nightwish. <laughs> yeah, man. Some Nightwish. Wow. All right. I got a I got another song. Are you. uh do you still like the song I'm Still Standing? Sure. Of course. Okay, good. <laughs> good. Good answer, John. Good answer. We're going to jump into a different track, then let's do that. Okay, cool. <laughs> Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the show. I now have a Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, Discord, and even a Patreon. The Patreon you can join for as little as one buck. The handle on all of them, it's of course, Joel Rohde. I'll see you guys on the next one.